Okay, so we're looking at square root graphs today. And as I just said, they're all starting to get easier now because they're all following a pattern. They've got this A and B that are translating the graph. So all we actually have to know is what that original graph looks like and how it behaves. That's what we call a graph, what it does, that's behavior, how it behaves, and then be able to move it and stretch it. All right, so those are our options. So the basic graph for this one is y equals the square root of x. Now, because we treat graphs as functions, we can't put the plus and minus in front of this. We could, and we would get a graph, but we wouldn't get a function, and we're treating these as function graphs, so we only want the positive side of it. So what happens is that we need to take the square root of whatever we have for x. So the square root of 0 is 0. zero. Right. What's the square root of a negative number? There is none. Right. So there is no graph past 0. All right. What's the square root of 1? 1. Okay. What's the square root of 4? Okay, so out here at 4, we have 2. 9? So what would this be familiar as? No. <laughs> good word, though. Yeah, good. A parabola would go this way. All right? And a parabola and a square root graph, they, they are the opposite of each other. Squared, square root. So a square root graph goes this way. All right, and so where we had one out, one up, we've now got one up, one out. It's the same thing, but in this case, we've gone three out, two up. Then we'd go five out, three up. All right, so it is just like a parabola. It is the inverse graph of a parabola. You don't need to know that, but it's a handy thing to know. So our parabola graph would go here. And if we drew a line in here and reflect it, we'd get the opposite. But you see, we've only got this half in this particular case to keep it a function. So to keep this half, we have this point of interest. I'm going to call it that again. So this point here that we move from. It's again on the origin to start off with. So we're just going to pick this graph up and move it around the place. So what does our moving around thing look like? It looks like that. All right, so that is our general formula. That's the one you're going to be given. K again does this. A moves horizontally. B moves vertically. Negative A because whatever A is, is the movement. All right, so if we have a look at one, Y equals a half the square root of X plus 2 minus 1. So the minus 1 hangs out the end of the bracket. This is like a bracket. Everything under it belongs, all right? So when we graph this, we need to know what that first point is. So A is negative 2, B is negative 1, K is a half. So negative 2, negative 1 needs to be on our graph because that's where we're starting, and we probably need it to be quite evident. All right, so negative 2, negative 1, that's where we're starting this graph. It's going to go from there. So we're going to go exactly the same as that one, one across, one up. And then we're going to go 1, 2, 3 from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, and 2 up. Then we're going to go another 5 and 3 up. And that's going to be our square root graph. 
just hangs in the middle of nowhere. Sorry? What happens to the half? Okay, that's our square root graph. Now we've got to deal with the half. What does the half do? Halves its height. Yeah, it's y. All right, so no, it's going to there. And no, it's not going to there, it's going to there. And no, it's not going to there, it's going to here. So it's going to get a lot skinnier. That's our half. Not a half. All right? So that half means half the distance from this line here that the graph is sitting on, it's squashed. If it was a, a negative, what would happen? If there was a negative K, it would be flipped. All right? So it would belong under here. We'll do one of those to find the equation. So finding the equation. All right, so that's what we've got. We know what A and B are. What are they? A is good, and B is no, one. Put a point, so here's our a point, zero, negative three in. So negative three equals K, the square root of zero plus three plus one. Negative three equals K, the square root of three plus one. One comes over the other side. Negative four equals square root of three K. So K is going to equal negative four over the square root of three. All right, negative means it's upside down. Four over three. 4 over the square root of 3 is going to be less than, I mean, greater than 1, so it has pulled out. It's not quite 2, though, but, yeah. So, features are pretty boring with this one. All we want to know, really, are the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Maybe it's POI, or it's starting point. But yeah. All right. Any questions?